Hey everyone, Mike Mulligan here. Thank you so much for joining me today. I am a certified orientation and mobility specialist, and today I'm gonna to be talking about one of the two basic cane techniques. And just so you know, this is really meant to be a review. Uh, it's not meant to replace meeting with an orientation mobility specialist, uh, because meeting with a specialist one-on-one -on -one can really help make sure you're doing this technique properly and safely. So today I'm gonna to be talking about the diagonal cane technique. All right, so let's get into it. So today I'll be talking about the diagonal cane technique, and this technique is really meant for familiar indoor areas. Uh, it's not meant for unfamiliar, uncharted territory or environments. And the reason for that is diagonal technique is good for detecting known obstacles, but not so good at detecting unknown obstacles or drop-offs. Uh, and then what I mean by drop-off is, say, a curb, an unexpected curb, or a stair down. Uh, so it's not the best technique for that. But in familiar areas, it's a really good technique to know how to do and have in your tool belt. And one other thing I wanted to mention is that even though this is good in familiar indoor areas, sometimes those familiar indoor areas change. And what I mean by that is, say somebody puts a ladder, they're doing some painting or construction that's not normally there. Uh, if you're doing diagonal cane technique, you might miss that, and then that can be a pretty serious obstacle. Or it could be something like maybe a rolling trash can that someone rolled out into the hallway. So diagonal cane technique is good, but it does have some limitations. So although the diagonal cane technique has some limitations, it's still better to use the cane in diagonal technique than just doing protective techniques alone, uh, because the cane essentially becomes a bumper between one's body and an object. And another good thing about diagonal cane technique is if you're using a cane, it at least makes people aware that you might have some sort of vision impairment, so they might have a better chance of kind of clearing out of the way or moving out of the way for you. So the diagonal cane technique can also be used for somebody with good amount of functional vision uh, in outdoor unfamiliar areas. And why I say that is it can be a good way of at least giving you some protection, detecting objects you might miss or drop-offs you might miss. Uh, but if you have some good functional vision, you might not uh, need the cane to alert you of every object or obstacle in your way. But using the cane to at least give you some warning and protection can be a good idea. And diagonal cane technique might be a good option for that. So before I get into my demonstration on how to do the diagonal cane technique, I first want to mention that there are three different ways of holding the cane while doing this technique. Uh, there's the index finger grip, there's the thumb grip, and the pencil grip. So if you're not quite sure how to hold a cane using either of those grips, I definitely recommend going and taking a look at some of my other videos that focus and go in depth on how to hold the cane using those grips. Okay, now we can start the demonstration. So the first thing you're gonna wanna do is grab the cane and get into index finger grip. So right now I have the cane out in front of me, it's pointing at 12 o'clock and I have index finger grip. My index finger is extended along the handle. And then next you're gonna wanna extend your hand past your hip, the same hip that the cane is on. So right now my cane is on my right side and I'm having my hand out past my right side about an inch or two. And then next is flexing the shoulder. So you want your hand to be about waist height and your shoulder flexed, uh, kind of like you're shaking somebody's hand. And then next is turning the forearm towards you or putting the palm away from you. So turning the hand or wrist in will cause the cane to have your palm facing out or towards the ground. And then the next thing you want is your cane tip uh, across your body diagonally and at 11 o'clock if you're right-handed. And if you're using your left hand, you're gonna want it at one o'clock. So here's a demonstration of me going back and forth. Uh, right now, you can see from behind, the cane is extended across my entire body diagonally. So it's giving me full body protection. And here's a demonstration of me doing it in my opposite hand uh, with the cane tip facing one o'clock. And when I'm doing this, the cane tip can either be uh, resting on the ground or it can be an inch or two off the ground. Uh, you might want to do inch or two off the ground, say in a carpeted area or a rough ground area where you'd be getting caught a lot. And then you might want to use um, just having the cane on the ground most of the time because that's a better way of detecting drop-offs. And now I am showing a thumb grip. Uh, same principle, you're just using your thumb extend it out instead of your index finger, and again, in diagonal technique. So, very similar, just uh, cane diagonally across the body, and you want to try and keep the cane tip at 11 or 1 o'clock at all times. If you feel it drifting either towards 12 o'clock 
or nine or three o'clock, uh, that's not what you want. So you're looking to have the cane tip remain at the same place uh, while you're moving. And here's a demonstration of pencil tip. So with pencil tip, uh, similar, you just have your hand in pencil grip. And again, I'm just walking back and forth uh, demonstrating that. So that's how you do diagonal cane technique. Thank you so much for joining me today. I hope this video review of the diagonal cane technique was helpful for you. Uh, if you have any questions, please reach out to an orientation mobility instructor. It's good to meet with one to review that you're doing the technique properly and safely. And if you're interested in more videos and you like what you're seeing here, if you can subscribe to my channel here, that'd be awesome. And thank you so much. Have a wonderful day.